going to be Brie and Medisa, and our again, our topic is retinitis pigmentosa. So just a quick introduction, retinitis pigmentosa, or RP for short, is a group of rare genetic disorders that involve a breakdown and loss of cells in the retina. And the retina is a light sensitive tissue that lines the back of the eye. The common symptoms include difficulty seeing at night and loss of side or peripheral vision. Yeah, Genetic mutations responsible for retinitis pigmentosa produce biochemical dysfunction, specifically affecting rod and photoreceptors in the retina. Defects may be associated with multiple pathways of injury, including apoptosis, light damage, ciliary transport dysfunction, and endoplasmic reticulum stress. The common result of all the possible pathways is the death of the photo of the rod photoreceptors. Since the rods are responsible for low light vision, the ever increasing loss of these cells produces the characteristic night blindness associated with RP and a gradual um, diminution of peripheral vision. Eventually, the destruction of large number of rods has a de deleterious effect on the retinal pigment epithelium epithelium or RPE and begins to affect cone photoreceptors as well. As cones begin to succumb to the toxic environment created by the progressive cell death in the retina, dyschromatopsia or disturbance of the color perception may develop. More than 100 genetic loci on 50 different genes have been found to cause multiple patterns of inheritance and expression for retinitis pigmentosa. Approximately 20% of RP cases are autosomal recessive with 10 to 20% autosomal dominant and 10% X-link recessive. The remaining cases are um, termed sporadic and have no family history or no known molecular basis. And on the right, you can see the normal retina on the left with the rods and the cones. And then on the right is the RP with the rods and the cones being destroyed. So the epidemiology, Non-syndromic retinitis pigmentosa has a worldwide prevalence of about 1 in 5,000 and carries number and carriers number about 1 in 1,000. Males are affected slightly more than females, often due to the X-linked form expressing more frequently in males. And syndromic RP is much less common, which estimates for Usher syndrome ranging from 1.8 to 6.2 cases per 100,000 individuals. The average age of symptom onset is dependent on the genetic type, and the autosomal recessive form will develop symptoms in their early teen years, but those affected with autosomal dominant RP will most likely not have symptoms until well into their 20s. More than three quarters of individuals with RP will be system symptomatic and present clinical evaluation and diagnosis of the disease by the time they are 30 years of age. And so you can see, you know, the normal vision on the left and then the RP on the right. So these are the different types of retinitis pigmentosa. So you have Usher syndrome, and this is retinitis pigmentosa combined with a loss of hearing ability as well. The loss of hearing usually um, shows before the loss of sight. There's Leber's congenital amaurosis or LCA. This type of RP is identified by severe loss of vision at birth. You also experience a variety of other abnormalities, including roving eye movements, deep set eyes, and sensitivity to bright light. There's cone rod disease, which is a type of RP, um, and it more often than not occurs in early childhood, starting from decreased visual, visual acuity and increased sensitivity to light, followed by impaired color vision, blind spots in the central vision, and loss of peripheral vision. The bardet bied syndrome, also termed as BBS, is a genetic disorder affecting the cellular cilia. It affects many body systems and body parts, characterized principally by obesity, RP, and kidney failure in some cases. The person having BBS also has extra finger or toes, a condition called polydactyly and hypogonadism, a condition affecting the secretion of hormones. And then CMV retinitis is a type of retinitis that develops from the herpes virus and affects the retina. The herpes virus causes no harm in an inactive state. It activates in people with low immune system, and when it gets activated, it causes the retinitis pigmentosa. 
So the pathophysiology, as previously mentioned, there are multiple genetic, genetically directed mechanisms for the progress of ret retinitis pigmentosa. Apoptosis is essentially physiological physiologic programming for cell death, which can be triggered by a genetic mutation. Apoptosis can be induced through cell-to-cell -cell communication between the photoreceptors themselves, so the death of rods can eventually spread to the cone receptors as well, which we talked about previously. And light exposure may exacerbate phototoxic mechanisms. These include mutations in retinol metabolism and acceleration of oxygen consumption in the environment, which can enhance the the degeneration of photoreceptors, both rod and cone. The ciliary function is important to the transport of nutrients and other substances in the retina, and some genetic mutations, including the one for Usher syndrome, can impair this function and cause cell vulnerability. Stress in the endoplasmic reticulum can cause the release of free radicals with subsequent stimulation of hypoperfusion of the retina and vascular endothelial, endothelial cell damage. So in the picture, you can see, you know, you have your normal eye anatomy, the cornea, iris, lens, and pupil, and then, you know, your retina with the opti optic nerve. And then in the RP, you can see the retina has pigment deposits known as bone spicules. And um, the last picture just shows a more advanced version of RP, with, and that has pigment clumps. So with the clinical findings, there are three clinical findings typical of retin retinitis pigmentosa, and it's the presence of bone spicule pigmentation, which we just showed, vascular narrowing, and optic nerve pallor. The melanin pigment, pigment deposits named for their characteristic bone spicule star shape are due to retinal pigments epithelial cells, which detach and, detach and migrate to perivascular locations in the retina. The exact cause of this migration is not fully understood, nor is the narrowing of retinal vessels, although one suggestion is that this results from a decreased metabolic demand due to the death of a large number of photoreceptors. And change in the appearance of the optic disc is probably due to the formation of glial cells, which cover the disc and increase reflectivity, producing a waxy pallor. So you can see the pigmentary um, atrophy and then the waxy pallor of the optic disc the bony spicules, the attenuated arterioles, and the absence of the fovular reflex. And as for the prognosis, the prognosis for patients with retin retinitis pigmentosa is dependent on the age of onset and pattern of inheritance. Early onset symptoms and severe vision loss and night blindness are expected with the autosomal recessive form of RP. The autosomal dominant expression is the least severe and associated with more gradual onset of symptoms later in life. The most severe vision loss occurs with the x links recessive RP. Tunnel vision is expected late in the course of all forms of RP, and almost all RP patients will be legally blind at some point in the progression of their disease. Total loss of vision is, unfor is, for unfortunate, is fortunately uncommon, and the macular function will generally allow light perception even after acuity is lost. So it generally decreases, and you can kind of see a slight decreased vision, your tunnel vision, and then blankness. Thank you. So I continue the uh, presentation with the symptoms. The symptoms usually start in childhood, but exactly when it's a start and how quickly it's get. Uh, it get worse varies person to person. Most people with um, RP lose much of their sight by early adulthood. Um, then at age, probably like at age 40, they are often um, legally blind. Um, because roads are usually the ones that affect first, the first symptoms is um, basically it takes longer uh, for, the, for these patients to adjust to the darkness, which is called night blindness and lose the peripheral vision at the same time or soon after the night vision will happen. Um, getting tunnel vision, uh, which means patient can see things to the side without turning their head. In the later stage, cones uh, may be affected. That will make it harder to do like detailed works and patient may have trouble seeing colors. It's rare, but sometimes the cones dies before actually rods. Um, bright lights become uncomfortable. The symptoms cause, um, the, these symptoms basically called uh, photophobia. Patient may start to see flashes um, uh, of light 
that she mirror blink. This is um, called also photopsia. So the next one is the causes of the um, RP. If you can go to the next slide. Um, so the causes of this disease, basically uh, more than 60 different genes can cause the different types of RP, but uh, parents can also like pass the, this problem gen, uh, genes to their children in three different ways. Um, first of all, um, uh, basically is autosomal recessive RP, which children can have like 25% chance of getting, um, you know, this disease. And um, the second one, uh, autosomal dominant, which the chances is getting higher to 50% chance of uh, being affected. And then the last one is X-linked um, RP. A mother who carries the problem gene can pass it to their children. Each one of them has a 50% chance of getting it. Most women who carry the, um, the gene, uh, they won't have any symptoms, but one out of every five children may have mild symptoms. Most men who get it uh, will have the more severe cases because it's X-linked RP and they only have like one type of the, um, you know, the gene, the chromosomes X. Uh, fathers who have the gene can pass it to their children since it's X-linked. And you can see on the right hand side, um, the normal rod cell and uh, muted one. Um, in the right one, you can see the gene uh, product of the mutated uh, RPGR gene uh, basically being altered and it's no longer able to maintain the health of the photoreceptors. So that's why they have like these genes in that um, X-linked. The next one is basically diagnosis of the RP. Um, there are like four types of tests that you can do in order to um, find out if you have the disease. One is off, um, off sorry, um, ophthalmoscope, which is basically putting a drop um, drops in in the eyes to make the pupil wider to get a better look at the retina. Uh, if patients have RP, there will be a specific kind of dark spot on the retina, which I can show you later. Um, visual field test, which basically is just looking through a, table of, a tabletop machine at a point in the center of the patient's vision. The machine uh, will uh, create a map of how uh, far the patient can see to the side of it um, themselves. And then the next one, which is, you can see the picture on the left-hand side, is electroretinogram, which is putting a film of gold foil uh, or a special contact lens on the eye. Um, then how the retina responds to the flashes of light will be measured with the electroretinogram. Um, then the last one is basically the genetic test. Um, you can submit a DNA sample to find out which type of RP you have. And if anyone in the family diagnoses with RP, all the family members should go to the eye doctor to do the screening and the test. And then treatment for um, RP patient. Basically, there is no cure for RP as of right now, but doctors are working hard to find a new um, treatment. Um, there are like few options that can um, restore some sites, but not completely. The first one is uh, acetozolamide. Uh, in the later stage, a tiny area at the center of the retina can swell. This is called macular edema, and it um, too can reduce the vision. This medication can, uh, can ease the swelling and improve the vision. Uh, the next one is the medication of vitamin A platinate. Platitate. Um, high doses of this compound may um, slow the RP a little each year, but too much of it can be toxic. The next one is basically preventation rather than treatment. You can use sunglasses and that make um, eyes um, less sensitive to the light and protect them from harmful ultraviolet rays that may speed vision loss. And then the last one is retinal implant. In the later stage of RP, implantation is available. And Argos um, 2 is the implant available in the US that you can see on the right hand side. Um, it's implanted um, into a single eye and paired with the glasses equipped with a camera. Um, images are converted to electrical pulses that are sent to the retina. 
Many were able to look at lights and windows. Some people were able to determine um, where other people were located in the room. And uh, about half of the subjects were able to read letters that were uh, about like nine inch high. And then we also have like treatments under review. Um, three of those uh, treatments um, basically are a replacement of the damaged cells or tissue with the healthy ones gene therapy to put healthy genes into the retina and then devices and tools um, can also help patients make the most of their vision and rehab services can help them to stay independent. And if you can see in the um, left hand side in the figure, um, the, the, the top one is basically the retina lines. Um, it shows like healthy and everything is fine. But then uh, you can see the healthy and unhealthy one. Um, so the rod and cons in unhealthy one basically are non-functional or dead. And then um, the UCI um, health clinical trial involves injection of stem cells into the white recess of the eye, uh, which basically the stem cells release the protein that um, triggers signals to reduce photoreceptor and restore some vision. This is basically most recent one, it's, and it's still it's under review. And the next slide is our references and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>